hello everyone. Uh, welcome to iQuanta. Uh, my name is Nitin. Guys, this is the third video of Press Synthesis. Uh, in the last videos, we have discussed some very important concepts with the applications. In this video, we're going to discuss, you know, some very good application of all the concepts which we have learned in the previous videos, right? So without wasting time, let's start with the first concept, uh, first application. So okay, this is question number one. It says that there is a class in which there are 40% is boys. Among the girls, 25% is, you know, got passed. And among the total students, 20% is, you know, have been passed. Now find the percentage of boys who have got passed. All right. So guys, if you look at this question, you know, they have not given any number. All the data is given in percentage. And percentage usually is taken as a relative or comparative data, right? If no data is given in real, only the comparative data is given. So that's why they have asked only, you know, the comparative, comparative data in the end. They cannot ask the absolute data because no absolute data has been given. So how do we solve such kind of questions? Uh, the best way of solving such kind of question is the assumption, right? Since this is the question of percentage, so the best assumption can be a number which is 100 or maybe a multiple of 100, right? So how do we start assuming? See guys, in the beginning, you know, the code starts from the total students in the class, right? So let us assume the total students are 100, all right? Let's assume the total number of students in the class are 100, all right? Now they are saying that in the class, 40% is a boys, that means the number of boys, if we, you know, say that it should be uh, 40, right? Very obvious. Number of boys has to be 40. And then they are also saying that uh, among the girls, 25% have been passed. But by the way, what should be the number of girls? Out of the total students, 100, if the boys are 40, obviously the number of girls should be 60, right? Very obvious. Now, among these girls, we know that uh, that 25% have got passed, right? So what should be the past number of girls? We'll say past number of girls should be uh, 25% of the number of girls, which is 60, right? And 25% of 60 is nothing but 15 because 25% is basically one fourth and one fourth of 16 we can easily say is 15. We do not need to write much, right? Okay, and they're also saying that among the total students, 20% have got passed, right? And the total students we assume is 100. Now the total number of past students should be how many? Total number of past students, right? We'll say it has to be, um, 20% of the total students, right? And 20% of 100 is nothing but 20. We can just say that, right? Now, guys, the total past students are 20, among which the girls who have got passed are 15. So very obviously, uh, if total students are passed in all, among which 15 are girls, that means the number of past boys have to be 20 minus 15 is equal to 5. Very obvious. So we can say here the number of past boys have to be, you know, 5 over here, right? Okay, number of past boys have to be 5. Now look at the final question. They're asking the percentage of boys who got passed. All right. So five boys have got passed out of the total boys equal to 40, right? So we have to find the percentage of boys who have got passed out of the total boys, right? So boys are 40 among which five have got passed and by which we can actually answer the final question. They're asking percentage of boys, you know, who got passed. So we'll say the number of passed boys which is equal to 5, as you can see, divided by total number of boys, which we have 40 into 100. Into 100, you can avoid if the fraction is very easy. And here is a fraction easy one. We can say 5 by 40 is 1 upon 8. And 1 upon 8 is nothing but 12.5 percent. So we can say yes, the answer of this question has to be 12.5 percent. A very nice question indeed. Okay, guys, let's move to the next question. The next question says that there's a boy Abhinav who is scoring 80% in physics and 60%, 66% in chemistry. And the maximum marks of both the papers are 100 each. Then they're saying what percent he scores in um, maths, which is of 200 marks, if he scores 80% marks in all the three subjects. All right. So first thing we know that he scored 80% in physics, 66% in chemistry, and the maximum marks of both the papers are given 100, right? But on the other hand, the maximum marks of maths is given 200 to us, right? Okay, so guys, by the way, um, total marks, uh, or, or you can say total maximum marks uh, out of which, you know, he is giving the exam should be 100, 100, and, you know, 200. 100 for physics, 100 for chemistry, and 200 for maths, right? So the total maximum marks should be how many? Let's write this first. Total maximum marks of the three subjects, right? Of overall three subjects, we can say are 100 for physics, 100 for chemistry, and 200 for maths, right? And that sum gives you 400, right? Now, he's getting how many marks? He's getting basically 80% marks in all the three subjects together, right? So how many marks he's getting? Um, got the marks, we can say 
80% of all the marks, which means 80% of 400, which is very simple calculation. It should be 320, right, guys? Very simple calculation it is. Now, we also know that he scored 100%, sorry, 80% in physics and 66% in chemistry. So, it's 80% of physics and the maximum marks of physics and chemistry both are 100. So, 80% of 100 is 80 indeed and 66% of 100 is also 66 indeed, right? So, by the help of this, we can get the number of marks he has gotten in mathematics. So, you guys, out of 320, we can say what? That he got 80 marks in physics, right? And 66 marks in chemistry and we need to think of the how many marks he has got in mathematics, which is very simple. We can say 80 plus 66 plus the marks in mass has to be 320 in all, right? Now we can say what? That uh, 80 goes here, gives us 240. Uh, 66 goes here, which gives how much? 240 minus 60 is 180. 180 minus 6 is 174, right? So he must have got 174 marks in mass to get, you know, 80% marks in all the subjects together, right? But the question is to find the percentage marks he scores in maths, okay? So how we can do that? Very simple. We need to find the percentage marks he got in maths. His total marks in maths are 174. Uh, and the maximum marks in maths can be 200 as it is given to us. So we need to find that 174 is what percentage of 200, right? Uh, either you multiply by 100 or not. It's very simple. You can say 174 by 2 gives us how many percentage? It should be 87 percentage in the end, right? So we can say the answer of the problem is 87 percentage, right? Okay, very good question. Now moving to the next question. Okay, so the level of the question will increase with every question, right? Now this question says that there is a man who has some money, right, out of which he gave 20% to his mother and 22% of the remaining to his brother. So the point is that he is giving 22% of the remaining. This is a key line, guys, 22% of the remaining, all right? Okay, so 22% of the remaining to his brother. Now he is left with rupees 234. We need to find his initial amount of money, you know, he had. All right, uh, in these kind of questions, you know, usually students get confused. So let me tell you how, what is the meaning of this question first of all, right? So guys, initially, let's say he had some money, right? Initial money. Okay, so he gave how much to his mother? He gives 20% to his mother, right? So how much he must be left with? He must be left with, you know, 80% of the initial money, right, guys? He must be left with 80% of the initial money. You can say that, right? This is 80% of the initial money he is left with. Now, out of the remaining money he had, means 80% of the in initial, you can say, is the remaining. He gave 22% of the money to his, you know, brother, right? So he gave 22% from here, from this, you know, to his brother. So from this, how much money he is left with? We'll say from this, 78% of money he is left, right? Now, usually the student think that 78% of this, or a student usually think, think that he has given, you know, 20% and 22%. Overall, that means he has given 42%. And he's left with, you know, 58%. But both the, you know, uh, you know uh, assumptions are actually wrong. How should we do this question? As I said, initial money is this. He's left with 80% of the initial after giving to his mother. And from this, you know, now he's left with 78%. Or you can say he's left with, finally, 78% of 80% of initial amount of money. All right. So uh, now if you have to, you know, rise it down to solve this question, finally, what we can say. So, guys, initially, uh, we have to find, you know, the initial amount of money he had, how much, right? So, first he gave 20% to his mother, as I said, he's left with 80%, right? So, you can also write down, if you want, that remaining money after giving to his mother is 80% of the initial amount of money, right? Initial amount of money. Okay, after that, uh, from this, he gave 22% of the money to his brother. So, finally, he's left with how much? So we'll say he's left with, finally, uh, okay, he gave 22% to his brother, so he must be left with, we can say 78% to whom, guys? Okay, he's left with 78% of, uh, we'll say, remaining amount of money, right? Okay, he's left with 78% of the remaining amount of money because out of the remaining money, he gave 22% to his brother, right? Okay, now this money left with is given to us how much? This is actually given to us rupees 234, right? This is given to us rupees 234 here. Now, the remaining money we already know is 80% of the initial amount of money, which you can put it here. So, 78% of remaining, which is, we can say 80% of initial amount of money, right? And that will give us how much? That must give us rupees 234, all right? That's it. So, by the help of this, guys, finally, you know, 
we can find the value of initial amount of money he had, right? So we just have to solve this equation in the end to get the uh, answer of the question, right? How do we solve this? So we can say 78% as 78 upon 100, right? And then we can say 80% as 4 upon 5, all right? And into, or you can say of initial amount of money he had, right? Okay, initial amount of money. And right hand side is how much? Right hand side is given to us rupees 234. All right, that's it, guys. Now, by using this equation, we can get the value of initial amount of money, right? How we can do that? Uh, we just have to solve this. Luckily, guys, 78, 3 is 234. You know, they give such kind of numbers which can get canceled purposely, right? So we can say finally that initial amount of money is. Uh, we'll say rupees 3 into 100 from here, 5 from here, right? And it will be divided by 4 from here as well, right? So we'll say 100 by 4 is 25. 25 5s is 125. 125 3s are, we can say rupees 375. So this is how, guys, we can solve this wonderful question, right? Now coming to one more question, which is, again, a very good question based on the election. This is one of the, you know, very important questions which they can ask in this person, this topic, right? Let's read how it can be done. The question is that in an election, there are only two candidates who are being contested, all right? Uh, then they are saying 30% of the votes did not cast the votes, 30% of the voters did not cast the vote. And out of the voters who have casted the vote, 200 votes were being declared as invalid. These kind of things also can happen, right? Uh, the winner gets 38% votes of the total voters on the voter list and one by wins by 440 votes, then we need to find the total number of votes which are being casted. All right. Uh, let's see it again. There are only two candidates, right? 30% uh, of the voters did not cast. 30% of the voters did not even cast. And out of the votes which is being casted, 200 votes were being declared as invalid, right? Out of the votes which are being casted, by the way, 30% did not cast. That means 70% people must have, you know, casted the votes. And among those 70%, 200 votes, uh, voters or votes were being declared as invalid. All right. So they will also not, you know, uh, take the part in giving the final results, right? Because these are invalid votes. And finally, we know that the winner has got only 38% of the votes of the total voters on the voter list. It's still he's a winner because, you know, a lot of votes got invalid. Lots of people did not vote. Because of that, only by 38% votes, uh, the winner has, you know, won this election. Okay, now we are also given that he wins by 440 votes. Now find the total number of votes which are being casted. We only need to find the number of votes which are being uh, casted. We do not need to find the number of total votes, you know, in the voter list. We only need to find the votes which are being casted. Okay, we also know that winner wins by 440 votes. So that means the votes which winner have got, right, VW means votes of winner, minus the votes which loser has got, this difference should be how much, guys? This difference should be 440, right? Because the winner is winning by 440 votes as it is given to us. Now, winner is getting how many votes? We know about the winner that winner has got 38% of the total votes on the voter list, right? So we can write this actually. We can say this is 38% of the total votes in the voters list. And guys, what do we write about the votes got by loser? Actually, we have not much idea, right? Or we can get the idea actually. See, remember total votes, out of the total votes, 30% were did not casting, right? So how much is left out? We can say 70% votes are left out. And out of which we also know that uh, 200 votes are invalid. So minus 200. So these people are actually, you know, uh, you can say the votes of these people will be giving us the result that who is winning or who is losing. And now out of these votes, the winner has got 38% of the votes, right? So finally, after subtracting 38% of the votes from this, we'll get the votes which the loser have gotten, right? Okay, so this is, we can say the votes which the loser has got, right? So this must be how much? We can say 70% minus 38% gives us 32%, all right? And this minus 200 is also there, right? So we can say 32% of the total votes minus 200, okay? Now, we'll be putting this uh, over here. Let's see what do we get, right? Votes by a loser. So votes by a loser, if you put it here, we have, we can say 32% of the total votes uh, minus of 200, right? And that right-hand side must be how much? It should be 440 over here, all right? 
Now guys, uh, after doing this, it's 32% of the total votes minus 32% of the total votes must be 6% of the total votes, right? And uh, what about the numbers? So minus, minus is plus 200, goes to the right hand side. So 440 minus 200 will give us 240, right? So the total votes uh, on the right hand side is 240. So we can say what that 6%, <coughs> We can say that 6% of the total votes is equal to 240. By the help of this, we can get, you know, the number of total votes as well. So you guys, 6% means 6 by 100 of the total number of votes, right, is equal to 240. So let's see what do we get the total number of votes by the help of this, right? 6 got cancelled, we'll say 40 uh, multiplying by 100 should be, we'll say, you know, 4000. So the total number of votes or you can say how many, uh, we can say these are equals to, oh guys, I think, uh, hope everything is correct. We can say 6%, right, is equal to how much? 240, 6 by 100, uh, 40 into 100 is 4,000, yes. So total number of votes, what 4,000 in the beginning, right? Now, what is the question? The question is that, uh, find the total number of votes which are being casted. So guys, remember, 30% of votes were not being casted. That means only 70% of the votes were being casted, right? Uh, let's calculate this as well. <coughs> so number of votes being casted, we can say is equal to 70%, you know, of the total votes, right? Okay, so total votes we got as 4,000. So 70% of 4,000 is very simple calculation. It has to be, you know, 2,800. All right, so this is how we got the answer. Answer is 2,800. Okay, so this is, you know, uh, the last question of this video. I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed these questions with their solutions. Uh, in the next video, we'll be coming up, you know, another, another concept of percentage change, right? Uh, till then, guys, uh, keep studying, you know, keep working hard and take care. Thank you.